This video is made possible by our generous supporters on Patreon. Check out patreon.com slash nwr for all the details. In 1990, Origin Systems released Wing Commander for MS-DOS. It revolutionized the space simulation genre and established tropes that would carry forward into modern times. Its complex space combat mixed with its deep narrative, branching paths and permadeath to create an incredibly immersive experience. Its legacy would spawn multiple numbered sequels, spin-offs, 10 novels and animated series, and a movie that somehow managed to end it all. Except, of course, for an Xbox 360 game that was different. Wing Commander dominated not just gaming, but every media form for the entirety of the 90s. It was huge, and it all started with one very important PC game. Which I never played. No, I was introduced to Wing Commander by this. Wing Commander on the Super Nintendo. Was it the best version of Wing Commander? No, in fact, it might be the worst version of Wing Commander, but it was enough to make me a fan. It wasn't the only Wing Commander game to be released on a Nintendo system either. Wing Commander The Secret Missions was also released for the SNES, and much later, Wing Commander Prophecy was released for the GBA. That being said, the Wing Commander series is a PC series. The majority of the franchise is exclusive to that platform, and each game was clearly made with PC in mind. However, in the console space, Nintendo has had more Wing Commander games on their platforms than any other console maker. And that's not all. It also has a lost Wing Commander game that, though finished, has only ever been seen by a few lucky people. I'm John Rairdon and you're watching NWR TV. Join me as we dig into these ambitious ports and a lost treasure as we explore the very short history of Wing Commander and Nintendo. Let's start at the beginning. Wing Commander on the Super Nintendo was released in 1992, two years after the original PC version. It was developed by Mindscape. While it makes plenty of changes, at a glance, it looks remarkably comparable to the original PC version, which was a pretty flashy game at the time. The space combat, branching paths, and permadeath are all here, so what changed? Well, there are those classic Nintendo changes one should expect. Hunter, one of the pilots aboard the Tiger's Claw, smokes a cigar constantly in the PC version, and it's missing in the SNES version. All references to alcohol are removed, including changing the title of this area from The Bar to The Officer's Club, so we can assume these beverages are all just pop. Technically, they do reference there being a pop machine in The Officer's Club in one of the Wing Commander books, so uh, that is actually canon. That's just Mountain Dew Code Red in a stemmed glass. Nothing to see here, folks. The one other very 90s Nintendo-style cut was the removal of the already minor swearing heard throughout the game. There will be no utterances of words such as hell or damn while I am in my officer's club enjoying my soda, thank you very much. Plenty of other small changes were littered throughout the Tiger's Claw, such as minor graphical updates and the shortening and alteration of takeoff and landing cutscenes. In fact, most of the story cutscenes that describe events going on in the greater world are changed to a simple block of text. But where the real meat and potatoes of Wing Commander's changes come in is in the space combat. This is where Wing Commander was not only doing the most visually, but behind the scenes as well. Wing Commander didn't use actual 3D models for its 3D space combat, but rather made use of sprites. Lots of sprites. Most ships generally had around 37 unique sprites. Most of these could then also be mirrored to create an alternate sprite facing the opposite direction. Add in scaling and rotation, and you've got what for the time made a pretty solid alternative to 3D models. The Super Nintendo, on the other hand, cuts it down to just a few sprites per ship when it comes to the hero ships. Enemy Kilrathi ships fare a bit better, though are still significantly reduced when compared to the PC. This makes space combat feel a little less 3D. But we're only getting started. Any Super Nintendo fan knows about Mode 7. It was one of the eight display modes available for the Super Nintendo and allowed for sprite scaling and rotation, 
It was made famous by games like Pilot Wings, F-Zero, and Super Mario Kart. It allowed a single layer to be scaled and rotated, and could do this very smoothly. Wing Commander made use of this for its dogfighting, allowing an enemy ship to come smoothly zooming past you. Despite a somewhat low frame rate, the effect ultimately works quite well, and mimics the PC original very accurately. Just one problem. Only one layer could do this at a time. That means only one ship could be zooming dynamically through 3D space within your view at any one time. That means that rather than being swarmed by Kilrathi fighters, you were patiently approached by one at a time. As for your wingmate, who of course needed to be right there in the fight with you, they were rendered in a more traditional style, with multiple sprites at different sizes whenever an enemy ship was in range. I suspect this is why so few angles of the hero ship were used, as each one needed to be stored at multiple sizes rather than simply scaled. Needless to say, this had a huge impact on how the game played. Battles often amounted more to a gauntlet of direct attacks from individual enemies rather than spiraling your way through a swarm of Kilrathi fighters. Arguably, however, this limitation may have been a blessing in disguise for Wing Commander on Super Nintendo. Even with only one fully scaling ship on screen at any time, Wing Commander on Super Nintendo doesn't run particularly well. It also lacks some of the more complex space simulation present in the original version. The original Wing Commander made excellent use of momentum. It was keenly aware that you were in a spaceship, not an airplane. If you hit your afterburners and then cut them off in a turn, you continue to move one direction while facing another. Need to attack an enemy carrier's powerful broadsides? No problem, just line up for a strafing run, cut your engines as you turn to face them, and let loose. It was incredible, and it leveraged the thrill and potential of space combat in a way that had never been done before. The SNES version didn't do that. Of course, you still had a full range of 3D movement, but those complex momentum-based maneuvers just weren't available. As a result, fighting a giant Kilrathi cruiser required you to fly directly towards it. Not a particularly safe thing to do, so the fact that you couldn't really be attacked by other enemies while you were doing it was honestly a godsend. While Wing Commander on Super Nintendo was fraught with cutbacks and limitations, it managed to convey enough of the original story to carry over that spirit. The complex branching world the original presented was intact, and enough of its core survived to be a remarkably fun game on its own. As I said at the outset, this is how I got into Wing Commander, and I wasn't the only one. Wing Commander did well enough on Super Nintendo that two more games were developed for the SNES, though only one of them would ever be released. When you hear the term DLC today, you often think of little bits of add-on content. At best, you get a little extra story at the end of the game, but at worst, you're wading through microtransactions. Now, the modern concept of DLC owes its roots to PC expansion packs. But by today's standards, a classic PC expansion pack would feel more like a sequel that reuses some old assets rather than add-on content. Games like Age of Empires, The Sims, or StarCraft had DLC that rivaled, if not dwarfed, the base game. StarCraft Brood Wars, for example, is pretty much its own game. Such was also the case with Wing Commander The Secret Missions. It made use of the assets of the original Wing Commander, but added an entirely new storyline and missions. It is also what many SNES Wing Commander fans would ultimately wind up thinking of as Wing Commander 2. The Secret Missions was released on Super Nintendo in 1993. Its gameplay is largely identical to that of the original. The same strengths and weaknesses are present, but with the engine already in place, Mindscape had time to add some unique polish to the SNES version. That's right, the SNES version of Wing Commander The Secret Missions actually has some unique elements not included in the PC version, and it doesn't take us long to find the first one. On PC, you'd simply select the Secret Mission campaign from the main menu, but that wasn't good enough for the Super Nintendo. This was getting its own release after all, deserves some fanfare. So what do we get? An entirely original opening cutscene that excellently sets up the plot of Secret Missions. Some nice swooping space shots bring us to the planet Warhammer 13, where we find the Kilrathi developing a powerful new weapon. We get some awesome giant sprites of the Kilrathi discussing their plan, and it's great. And while this cutscene is entirely new, it visually matches up very well with how the rest of the Wing Commander cutscenes look. 
Whenever I boot up the PC version of Secret Missions, I'm reminded that this scene isn't there, and I kinda miss it. You'll remember from the first game that one of the changes made was a simplification of the launch sequences. Well, in Secret Missions, Mindscape opted to make an entirely original launch sequence for the SNES version using our old PAL Mode 7. First, you see your ship being lifted up onto the flight deck. Then, a nice Mario Kart style perspective shot shows the ship taxi and finally launch off into space. While I love the original launch sequence with all my heart, I have to give this one credit. Rather than being a limited version of the original, it opts to do its own thing and plays to its strengths, and I think it looks great. Now, you probably caught that I referenced there being two follow ups to the original Wing Commander that were developed for the Super Nintendo. Obviously, Secret Missions was the one that made it to store shelves. We'll come back and revisit the other one once we talk about the final Wing Commander game to ever be released for Nintendo system. Wing Commander Prophecy on the Game Boy Advance. Yeah, we're doing a little bit of a time jump here. From 1993, we need to jump all the way ahead to 1997 and the release of Wing Commander Prophecy on PC. While it's arguably kind of Wing Commander 5, in many ways, Wing Commander Prophecy was set to be a reboot of the series. Longtime player character Christopher Blair was replaced by newcomer Lance Casey. A new enemy, the Nephilim, are introduced, and lots of pew pew space fighting ensues. Using a new engine, it offered impressive graphics for the time, and like the Wing Commander games that have been released after the SNES era, it featured full motion video for its cutscenes. Nintendo's system at the time was the Nintendo 64, which didn't have the best track record with full motion video. However, the Nintendo version of Wing Commander Prophecy wouldn't release for another six years. This would put it during the GameCube era, a system that could likely run it quite well. But instead, Wing Commander Prophecy was ported to the Game Boy Advance. There is a certain irony in the fact that between the release of the original Wing Commander in 1990 and the GBA in 2001, handhelds had essentially caught up to where home consoles were when the original Wing Commander released. A port of the original 1990 Wing Commander game to the Game Boy Advance probably would have fared pretty well, but instead the Game Boy Advance was tasked with running a game developed seven years later. The craziest part is that it actually kind of works. By 1997, Wing Commander was of course using full 3D models rather than sprites. You might expect the GBA to use pre-rendered sprite versions of these models, similar to something like Donkey Kong Country, but you'd be wrong. Wing Commander Prophecy on Game Boy Advance not only uses full 3D models for all of its space combat, but handles them better than most other 3D games on the platform. Best of all, multiple enemies and allies can be in close range at once, giving a space combat experience that is much closer to the original. Seeing squadrons of friendly and enemy fighters swarm around your carrier is truly incredible on that tiny GBA screen. So how did they do it? And how does the Game Boy Advance version of this much later game compare to the original on Super Nintendo? The Game Boy Advance port of Wing Commander Prophecy was developed by Raylight Studios and made use of their Blue Roses engine. The engine was revealed in 2002, a year before Wing Commander Prophecy would ultimately be released. At the time, Raylight had already been working on their own GBA space sim called Star Giants. This would ultimately transform into and form the bones of the GBA version of Prophecy. The Blue Roses engine was incredible and pushed out graphics that looked more in line with the PS1 than they did with the GBA. A space sim like Wing Commander made perfect sense for it, as the absence of a complex environment to render allowed a fair amount of detail to be put into the ships. As a result, the game generally ran quite smoothly, barring some of the larger encounters. Combat in Wing Commander Prophecy on Game Boy Advance feels incredibly accurate to the original and much better than it did on Super Nintendo. You could even grab some link cables and a few copies of the game and set up battles with your friends and bots. My younger brother and I whiled away a few road trips in this mode. While combat holds up incredibly well, other areas see more extensive cuts. The Wing Commander games generally see the player navigating a large map and traveling to specific nav points to do battle or whatever else a mission may require. The GBA version of Prophecy simplifies this down. After launching, your ship automatically autopilots to the required nav point. When your mission there is complete, it automatically pilots you to the next. 
This means you won't be dodging any asteroids or anything on your way to objectives, but the core encounters remain, and some of them are quite impressive in terms of scale. It's aboard your carrier, the TCS Midway, that we see the most significant cuts. Those full-motion video cutscenes are now text boxes. Screen grabs from the original cutscenes are used as character portraits. It gives the game a bit more of that original Wing Commander vibe. You still navigate through the ship just like you did on the PC, though it may be a bit smaller than you remember. All in all, the GBA version of Wing Commander is incredibly impressive. In fact, it might be the most technically impressive Wing Commander game ever developed for Nintendo system, at least of those officially released. That's right. Time to go back to that mysterious other Super Nintendo Wing Commander game. After the success of Wing Commander and the secret missions on Super Nintendo, Origin evidently felt it may be worth it to port Wing Commander 2 themselves. That's right, there was an in-house version of Wing Commander 2 developed for the Super Nintendo. Not only that, it was finished. It was planned for a release in May of 1995, but that never happened. So close was it to publication, however, that review copies were sent out. Both Electronic Gaming Monthly and GamePro published reviews of the game, complete with screenshots. According to WCNews.com, the go-to Wing Commander fan site on the internet, the final master was even sent off for production before the game was ultimately abandoned for financial reasons. The reviews we have show a game that appears to have been excellently modified to fit the hardware. Rather than an attempt at a straight port like the other two SNES Wing Commander games, Wing Commander 2 evidently altered its gameplay to be more arcade style. That being said, it sounds as if the story cutscenes were entirely preserved. According to an interview with the game's lead designer, Billy Kane, on WCNews.com, gameplay was significantly different, but we spent the majority of our time ensuring that the movies were 100% accurate. Story was huge in that game, and we wanted to give it the respect it deserved. According to Mr. Kane, the game used an entirely new engine rather than making use of the one built by Mindscape, and by all accounts, it sounds like it ran very well. When asked if he knew where the prototype version of Wing Commander 2 on SNES may be today, Mr. Kane simply answered, yes. To this day, 25 years later, no copies of Wing Commander 2 for SNES have ever been reported found. We know the Master was delivered to Japan, and we know that multiple press copies were sent out. So theoretically, there are copies out there. Unlike another popular lost Super Nintendo game, Star Fox 2, which was recently released, it seems like the odds of EA suddenly deciding that they want to release Wing Commander 2 on SNES are pretty unlikely. That being said, it's incredibly important to the history of the series, and just to gaming in general, that should a copy ever be found, it be properly preserved. Nintendo's history with the Wing Commander franchise consists entirely of games that push the limits of their hardware. It is also a history that remains incomplete. My hope is that the final chapter of this story is not lost to time. One day, hopefully, we'll be able to see Origin's own take on Wing Commander on a Nintendo console. Somewhere, likely in a box in a closet that hasn't been gone through in decades, there's a copy of Wing Commander 2 on the Super Nintendo. If you see it, let us know. Thank you very much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, consider subscribing, and check out NintendoWorldReport.com for a whole lot more. I did want to give out a quick shout out to WCNews.com. Their archiving and historical information about this series was extremely helpful when producing this video. I'll leave a link to their website in the description. Uh, they also have a Discord, which you can get to through that website. And hey, if you're that person who happens to have a copy of Wing Commander 2 on Super Nintendo in your closet, they would be good people to contact. Uh, they have done a lot for uh, digging up the lost history of this series, uh, so they should be the people to do that as well. Or me, you can tell me too, but I'm just gonna tell them. Speaking of discords, there's a link to ours in the description as well that you can join to chat about this or anything else Nintendo related. And if you wanna support what we're doing here, you can stick around for information on our Patreon. Once again, I'm John Rarden, and I will see you next time. This video was made possible by our generous supporters on Patreon. Did you know that Nintendo World Report is funded directly by fans like you? When you support Nintendo World Report on Patreon, you get immediate access to multiple exclusive podcasts every month, exclusive Discord channels, an early look at select content, and more. All for as little as a dollar a month. Check out patreon.com slash nwr for all the details.